Okay, in this particular example, what I want to do is place a test point for uh, these two nets down here um, on the on the back side of the board. So I've I've created a two pin component in the schematics, just basic two pins, and you can see I've attached to that a special footprint I've created. Now the process for creating that's very simple. In the footprint editor, I've placed two sets of pads. Uh, and label them accordingly. This is, is uh, designator 2 and next to that is also a designator 2 surface mount pad and between those is a poly regional object uh, which I've just drawn from place solid region and I've just clicked around the vertices I needed to make that and then of course I made a mirror image of, of that uh, for the other pad, pad 1 and then of course to make sure there's an opening on the mask layer for this copper here that's joining the two pads together I've I've copied the two poly regions and pasted them as separate poly regions on the mask layer to create an opening it's really no more difficult than that it's very very simple and straightforward so I save the library attach that to my schematic component and then I've placed that in my design on this schematic sheet down here on my card edge connector on the two pins I wanted to connect it to. It's called test P1 and uh, now I need to push that across into the PCB editor so I'm going to run the ECO by going design and update PCB document. That brings up the engineering change order. Let me resize that so it fits on the screen. It's going to uh, change some of the net names around um, to suit what I've done and it's also going to add that component to the design. So I'm going to normally I'd go ahead and, and validate this or maybe even generate a report but for expedience I'm going to execute those straight away. Now that that's done you'll see over here on my side of my board there's J2 components come in on the top layer and I can just click and drag that to place it where I need it to be and it's actually going to be on the bottom side of the board so I'll hit the L key to flip it over and then spacebar to rotate it around and uh, I've just moved some of those other tracks on the top layer away to make sure they don't short out with the through hole pads so that goes there no no clearance violations because the components on the bottom side so it doesn't violate with these two diodes on the top side um, if I go to single layer mode real quick shift S you'll see the only part of the component that's on the top is is the through hole part which is what we expect and on the bottom side I've got the through hole plus the surface mount pads plus the polygons joining those together all I need to do is wire this up now so I'll draw my tracks which the width of which follow my design rules and draw a track here to here now normally if I were to run a design rule check right now this area would violate. First of all I'd get an unrouted net because you see that that net connection line there joining the, this pad to this pad doesn't recognize the copper between them. Also I'd get a short circuit rule because of that copper in between them shorting, shorting out with no net assigned to it. So all I need to do is run a design net list configure physical nets which analyzes the tr co actual copper on the board and uh, once I've set that up it recognizes that this copper is not actually connecting to any other net but the same net as these two pads so it'll automatically assign that net to it and uh, and solve that problem in one hit all I need to do now is uh, run a design rule check and get it ready for for Gerber's um, for production so I'll go to tools design rule check in the rules to check I'm just going to check today the, uh, the clearance rule short circuit and unrouted net because I want to make sure that uh, there are no violations and you can see the messages panel is completely clear so there are no design rule violations whatsoever. If I save the board now all I need to do is create my Gerbers. I'll go back out of single layer mode um, not that I have to to do that but I'm just gonna just for clarity file fabrication outputs Gerbers. I'll set some options here I'm gonna go in inches to uh, 2 colon 5 format. I'm going to use can include all the used layers in my Gerber plots. Um, layer 16 I will include on every every Gerber because that's the uh, the title block and outline for the page. I'm also going to include drill guide plots. The apertures will be embedded um, and there's some other basic options there. I won't worry about those right now. I'll just hit OK and it generates the Gerbers and opens them up in a CAM file in the CAM editor. So there's our design. You can see the drill table layers come in nicely. Now if I want to isolate the top layer, 
I'll select the top layer, right click and isolate or simply put the cursor there and hit the left mouse, uh, sorry the left um, left arrow on the keyboard. If I zoom right in, I'll just zoom in and center, there's my test point through hole pads, you can see the pads actually are there on the top layer. If I go down to the next layer you can see not only do I have the two the through hole flashes but I also have the surface mount flashes and just to be really sure or thorough on the uh, on the bottom solder mask layer I'll just go down to the bottom solder mask layer GBS and there's the the solder mask negative so there's definitely going to be a paste mask or solder mask opening over the entire pad we could, uh, for that matter, look at the paste mask. You can see the solder paste mask is only putting paste on the surface mount pad, but if we wanted to, we could cause it to put paste over the entire thing. Um, so it works. It, it doesn't go all green and horrible with design rule violations. It just works, and it's actually fairly easy and straightforward to do this.